Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be checking out WAN XAI State of the Art as of today video generation model. We're going to be running it on our MacBook Pro. Now, this model just got released a couple of days ago, so everything is fixing uppery, but I did manage to get it running. I got the whole full thing running because by default it doesn't run and double by default, you come up with uh, not enough memory to process it. I'm using 128 gig version of the MacBook Pro, but it has been run on M1 Pros with a lot less memory. So that is good. Now, what I love about this model is they've really improved the physics of things bouncing around. So that is really good. We're gonna be showing you some demos very, very soon. Previously, I was using the Hong Yang, Hong Yang video. And that guy, the physics of things bouncing around wasn't that good, but with this guy, they've really fixed it up. So join along. We're gonna be installing it from scratch so you guys can follow along. Let me know how it runs on your systems. Let's go jump in. So just look at all these demonstrations that they got on their websites here. Open source models, that's amazing. Thank you, Sheena. Do some really cool stuff here. Now they got three major models to run. They got a 14 billion parameter version, two of them. And uh, they got 1.3 billion parameter version. That's the one we're gonna be running. And that one produces five second clips at 480p video. Potentially we can run the bigger ones. I haven't actually tested it out. Maybe we'll test it out live here to see if it works with the memory constraints. So that'll be interesting to find out. But to get up and running, you go on GitHub, WAN video, WAN 2.1 and this tells you all the instructions to get it up and running. However, it's it's based for Linux. It does, can run on Windows. I did get it running on Windows. You just have to make sure that the file, na file, the file names being saved don't include any special characters because by default, it tries to record the file name with the, the size of the video. So 480 times 832, something like that. So if you get rid of those special characters, it works fine on Windows. I ran it on my RTX 3080 and it ran really slow. I only got 10 gigabytes of VRAM on that guy and it ran really, really slow. She runs faster on my MBook Pro, surprisingly, because of that constraint. But for you Mac users, this cool dude out there in the world called Baki T, B A K H T I. You can go on his GitHub repo and he's actually got a pull request with WAN to see if they can integrate the changes to get it running for Mac OS. And he's giving you the instructions to go ahead and install it on Mac. So first this one, the installs Homebrew if you don't already have it. And then he installs Python 3.10. And then he creates a virtual environment. He's called it VNWAN. And then source that activates that virtual environment, which means all of the PIP, all of the modules that you install from Python there on will be running on that virtual container. He won't, he won't add it onto the main Python code. It will just be running in that, perf uh, it will be just running in that container. And then you run pip install our requirements and requirements over here. It requires Torch 2.4 and above, Torch Vision, OpenCV, all these kind of good stuff. It tells you exactly what to install. So you will install that, you install Hugging Face, and he's downloading the 1.3 billion parameter model. Now, if you go back into WAN's tutorial, they're downloading the 14B version over there in the command line. Now, again, we're going to be running all this in the command line. I'm just giving you a little tutorial how to get it all running. So I've actually downloaded all of the models just to see if you get it running. And um, yeah, he just goes ahead and he generates a lion running under snow in Smartland. And the key thing with him is he's got the number of frames being produced as 16 because I guess he's constrained by the amount of RAM he's running on his system. So we can just, let's just run that one over here. And you can see at the bottom here, it's gonna create the WAN T2 pipeline. And it's gonna take a 30 seconds and it's gonna start creating a video. And then it's all about the number of iterations you choose to make your video. So by default, the number of iterations or the number of steps it will process, every single time it processes it, it refines the image. It makes it look a lot, lot nicer. So by default, it's 50. He said it's 25, so it will run a lot faster here. And I'll give you some examples while that guy is cooking. So for example, here, over here, I've just got five iterations here. So you, see, you can see everything is very fuzzy. Now, when I improve it to 25 iterations, you can see that everything is a lot more smoother. And this is the default example that it runs with that WAN 2.1 recommends. So it's still creating the pipeline. It's almost created it there. If you have Visual Studio Code, I recommend trying that out because then you can step through the code itself to see what's going on. So now it's generating the video. 
And this part is where it's going to start telling you how much iteration it's going to take. So we're doing 25 steps in the example that we've referenced over here. And it takes six seconds in iterations. So that is very, very fast because we're only doing 16 frames. Now, 16 frames is going to be one, one second of video. So we're producing one second of video should take around two minutes to produce. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clone a repo and just set it all up from scratch. So first you run that command and that will install brew. Brew is just a package manager for Mac. Then you type in brew, install Python, and you want version 3.10 because that's the one that works well. There are improved versions of Python, so it's 3.12. I haven't actually tested it with those ones, but usually you want the version that runs and 3.10 is the one they, re they recommend with Hongyang video. So I guess let's do the same with this one. On Windows, you also need to be aware of the CUDA version you are running. So if you are using Windows, I found 12.4 ran well. You don't want to use the latest one, 12.8, because that one doesn't run. But 12.4 ran well, so that's just a device if you're doing CUDA. So next up, we're going to be creating a virtual environment. We're calling it here VN WAN. And all it does is, if you do ls plus la, it makes a virtual environment folder called vm.wan. And that's where it's going to store all of the modules we are going to download so source that makes our virtual environment active over here and then pip install our requirements that will go ahead and install all of the modules and obviously i don't actually have that because i never cloned the directory so maybe that would have been useful for us over here so let's just start that again rm minus rfvn and to clone the environment you want to get the folder here and then you want to type in first you want if you don't already have it you can install git so you type in brew install git and that will download git and git is a download manager for these repositories so we want to type in git clone and that wan 2.1 that comes from bakhti hyphen a so we enter that directory wan 2.1 and then we're going to create the virtual environment as before And then we activate that environment. And now we can install pip. And it'll go ahead and start downloading all of the required packages. Now, things to note is Torch is the module that does all of the processing for transformations to get all the video stuff working. There is a newer version and there's also a nightly version. I've tried 2.6, the base one and nightly version and I still run into the same memory issues when I'm trying to make more than 16 frames a second. I can go up to 48 frames a second on my system. There is a workaround around that, and I'll show you exactly how to do that if you want to get the full fat 81 frames, five seconds of video out there. I'll show you how to do it at the end. But right now, the issue with MPS, which is Mesh Tool Performance Shaders, or macOS, which is the equivalent of CUDA, if you ever use Windows and NVIDIA cards, is it's still a work in progress and it doesn't allow as much memory to be allocated as CUDA does. And you have to use floats at a size of 32 bit. So that uses a lot more memory. So for example, in this actual video encoding situation, you can actually use, it's meant to run on float 16, but on Mac due to MPS, you have to make it 32 bit. So you're doubling the memory requirements just because of that. Something that could fit into 16 bits is actually forced to fit into 32 bits. But nevertheless, We've downloaded requirements. So the next step is we want to install Enops. So we're going to install that. We want to install the Hugging Face API. So that Hugging Face command line interface that allows you to download the models directly from Hugging Face just using the command line. It's a lot easier to just copy and paste. So I've just downloaded that and it's going to go ahead and start downloading the show. Now, just for time's sake, I'm going to just cancel this download because I've already actually already got it downloaded here. So I'm just going to copy it from the version I've got, 1.3. And I'll put it into that demo folder over here, replace. And then I can export the MPS fallback. And I can run the exact same command and it should all work. Python generate.py and we've got the parameters here. First one, 480 by 832 means 480p. And we're doing 25 steps. So we're going to improve the images 25 times. You can reduce that to five if you just want to get a good visualization of what's going on. 
and frame number 16, which means one second of footage. And it's going to go ahead and start running it. So we've now downloaded it from fresh with you guys. And we'll be producing the output that we just processed. So that was a, a pretty poor video, to be honest. Didn't work as well. Obviously, if you make the iterations 50, the quality will be a lot better. And one second of footage isn't that good. So the next thing we want to do is we want to see how much frames we can produce. So I'll go with some of my runs. So for example, if we want to make Elon Musk running along the beach towards the camera, we can make it 48 frames over here, 25 steps, and we're going to be running that, that model. If we run that command, it will produce, this is what it thinks Elon Musk looks like jumping along the beach. It's not, not that good, but I do want to show some good examples. So previously with Hong Yang, if you want to do some physics running kind of animations, it's a bit all over the place. It didn't work out really well. However, with this model, as you can see over here, we got a lot more the right sort of, you can see the waves and everything just seems to be working all together. And for you females out there who are excited about seeing the opposite gender running along the beach, hey. And that was all produced on the Mac and itself right there. One last thing I wanted to share with you guys on if you did want to produce five seconds of footage, not just a limited due to the amount of RAM, the situation with the memory is to do with the attention function inside attention.py. So by default, it runs torch.nn functional scale.product attention. And this is a, a function inside torch. And if you're using a lot of frames, it's going to crash out saying it doesn't have enough memory to allocate the situation. So what you can do is rather than just running it using the whole array, you can chunk the data. So chunk the tension over here. I've got it here saying just saying if the, the shape size is more than 18,000, we're going to be using the chunked version. The chunk version in my performance ran 40 divided by 58. It ran around 40% slower than the unchunked version. And this is the code for the chunked version here. Chunked attention right there. Um, maybe I'll post it in the comments if you guys just, you can copy paste that. So you can run that version and that will run it in chunks and that will allow you to run the whole 81 frames. Now, further work, there is a flash attention. You pretty much have to use that if you're running that on Windows, especially when I was running on my RTX 3080, it ran super slow. So there's something called flash attention, which is a fast version of the attention function. And that guy works on Windows and CUDA, but it's not there on Mac. However, for further work, there is a cool dude called Philip Turner. He's made metal flash attention. I haven't tested it out myself because it's not integrated into Python yet. So he's got the metal port of flash attention and he says he's actually made it run faster than the native version. So in theory, if we can get that guy integrated into this Python code, we should be getting this to run really, really fast. So that is the state of play on making AI video. I got to say, I'm very, very impressed with the quality of the work. As you can see here, we got Mr. Man jogging along the beach. I did ask him to be muscly, but for some reason didn't want to make him muscly. This guy didn't work out well. That looks really, really beautiful. Really, really beautiful over here. That looks gorgeous as well. So some really good situations happening there. Regarding utilization. So it's running 100% on the GPU right now. And we're using 92 gigabytes of memory. And now 60 gigabytes of memory. So it's, it's using a lot of gigabytes of memory. But of course, you can get it to run on your system just by chunking the data. When I'm chunking the data here, I'm chunking it at 10,000. That's my chunk size. If you have memories, if you have systems with less memory than 128 gigabytes, you can just make the chunk size smaller. It will run slower, but it will run. So you can just leave it overnight and you'll have like a five second video of cool stuff. One thing, since we are here to, together, and then I might as well just try it out. Let's see if we can run the 720p model. I haven't actually tried this. So uh, that will be interesting. So what I need to do to get that running is change that parameter from 480p to 720p. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the default examples that WAN recommends just to see how that works. So generate, they got 720p over here and 
they're making the cats. So I'm just gonna take that out of Git and we're just gonna run it vanilla. Their code doesn't work because you need to put quotes around the numbers here on Mac. So, and we don't use Python, that was my mistake. So it's creating the WAN T2V pipeline. And in theory, I've got it in code to automatically fall back to the chunked version. So it might just work if it needs too much memory. Let's see. It's gonna take about a minute to start setting it up. And then in about a minute, we're gonna find out if we can run the full fat 14 billion parameter model. Oh, that was good. So the GPU is getting hit 87%. Oh, Are they unfortunately? It has crashed and it says the impact is trying to get a buffer of 115 gigabytes. And that is in the scale.product attention over here. So I can actually get this working and that is if I reduce the chunk size. So right now I've got 1024 times 10. If I just get rid of that times 10, save it and then run it again, it'll probably work because then we'll only be trying to allocate a tenth of that, 15, 11 gigabytes. Let's just try it out one more time. And then I'll make that if condition a bit more clever just to find out exactly how much memory is being allocated rather than the size of the shape. Oh, we can see the memory. It's using 131 gigabytes. It might run out of memory. Uh, it's running though. The GPU is getting thrashed. It is doing something. It's doing something right now. I'm excited to see how many minutes it will be per iteration. Probably five minutes per iteration, maybe 10 minutes per iteration. But as you can see, the code is running and my GPU is getting thrashed. I can hear it right now from the code and we're hitting 100% of the GPU and the code is running. But of course, it's gonna take an extremely long time to process this. That's uh, pretty cool. All right, that is awesome. So. So yeah, let me know what kind of awesome AI applications you guys are thinking of making. If you're interested, I also have been working on my second AI application. It's actually released on the App Store. And that was, that was fun, actually, I'll show you maybe. It's uh, this one over here is called Diagnosis Pad. And the idea right now is in the world of doctor-patient consultations, there's these things called AI scribes. And during a patient consultation, the audio is being recorded and sent to servers online for their AI processing. I didn't like the idea of privacy, you know, complete audio, privileged doctor-patient conversations being recorded and sent to servers which can potentially get hacked and all that kind of stuff. I didn't like that. So I made an application that does it all offline on your phone so nothing is sent to the cloud for processing. So the idea here is it runs on device and it gives you, it's kind of like a symptom checker. You start talking to it and it will analyze what you're saying and give you the likely diagnosis of your symptoms. And it gives you, it's got a medical terminology database that tells you why that symptom is the cause. And it also will make clinical notes for you if you are a doctor using it. So yeah, running all on device, pretty interesting. So let me know what kind of apps you guys are working on in the AI space and the kind of videos you guys are make with WAN 2.1. Good, good stuff. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.